Namaste and welcome back to the video course on watershed management. Today we will start a new module, module number 8 on storm water and flood management. The topics covered in this module include storm water management, design of drainage system, flood routing through channels and reservoir, flood control and reservoir operations and some case studies. So, in today's lecture in module number 8, lecture number 31, we will discuss storm water management. So, some of the important topics covered in today's lecture include storm water runoff, harvesting, storm water systems, integrated storm water management, separate system, combined systems and urban flooding. So, keywords for today's lecture storm water runoff, system harvesting, management and urban flooding. So, as we were discussing earlier, so when we deal with uh, watershed management, so we have seen that uh, there can be say sometimes plenty of water say due to heavy rainfall or sometimes there can be drought type situations. So, depending upon the climatic conditions or the variations say during monsoon season when heavy rains fall takes place, there can be uh, say so much of water throughout the area whether it is say rural area or urban area. So, especially in urban areas when this water level goes up to, to certain say beyond certain level, there will be huge problems like say uh, disturbance to the traffic, disturbance to the total life in that area and then a lot of there will be huge losses, economic losses. So, that means say the, the flooding, say urban flooding is a major problem say either in watershed scale or otherwise it is a, a major problem. So, this is caused due to the storm water, I mean due to the, the when the rainfall takes place so as we have discussed earlier. So, we can classify into overland flow and channel flow. So, this overland flow component especially say the this all this will be collected through drainage system various drains and then that will be joined into a stream or a channel and then finally, that will be routed through to the major river or to the ocean. So, that way only generally the system will be working. So, that way the storm water management especially when the, during the rainy season or monsoon season, the storm water management within the watershed is an important topic since it is uh, say in many aspects it is related to the say the problems that means like flooding problems or it is related to the water harvesting or whether we can capture some of this water and then uh, recharge or do some uh, harvesting. So, that way also it is important. So, in today's lecture let us discuss about the storm water runoff, storm water management and then urban flooding related issues. So, as I mentioned storm water is a uh, is rain water and melted snow that runs uh, of uh, streets, lawns and other sites. So, that way say it is somewhat we can say it as a overland flow. So, whatever is uh, say due to rainfall or due to melted snow uh, say, uh, say coming up through the land and then coming to the streets and then lawns and other sites. So, this is generally termed as uh, storm water. So, when storm water is absorbed into the, into the ground, so you can see that wherever infiltration takes place, it is filtered and replenish the aquifers or flow into streams and rivers. So, whether it can be either this, this storm water can be recharged to the aquifer systems through infiltration process or it can simply flow through the drainage systems uh, to the streams and rivers. So, uh, this is uh, say both way it is possible, but we want as much as possible if it is uh, say infiltrating down. So, that replenishes the aquifer system. So, that we can uh, use uh, in uh, say for, for future purpose. So, by uh, pumping out the, out the water from the uh, aquifer systems. And then when we consider the urbanized watershed or urbanized areas, say especially impervious areas like pavements and roofs prevent water from naturally soaking into the ground. So, you can see that um, in a city like Mumbai or Chennai or Calcutta or Delhi, we can see that most of the areas say especially pavement and then uh, so many so other, other lot of other areas are also uh, say paved or it is uh, impervious. So, that way this uh, impervious surface uh, say stops the water to percolate down to the to the ground. So, that way uh, you can see that this water will be uh, say moving uh, fast. So, this water runs rapidly into storm drains 
uh, or sewer systems and drainage ditches and then uh, it can cause uh, say uh, lot of problems as we discussed. So, some of the important problems can be like um, say downstream flooding say if a huge uh, heavy rainfall takes place and then all the this water the, the, the storm water is coming uh, say. Uh, uh, to, to the, the areas, uh, the downstream areas. So, then there can be possibility of flooding. Then uh, stream bank erosion. So, say especially in, uh, say uh, wherever the so soil is um, loose and then um, uh, say heavy rainfall takes place, there can be stream uh, bank erosion. And then uh, wherever uh, say especially this water will be going to reverse and then uh, it will be say uh, many times this water will be taken back for um, say uh, the, the say municipal water supply. So, then there can be increased turbidity. So, another issue can be increased uh, turbidity and then uh, habitat destruction uh, changes in the stream flow hydrograph. So, that means uh, say especially in the urban areas due to uh, the time uh, less time of concentration or time to peak will be less and then uh, the peak also increases. So, that way there will be changes in the stream flow hydrographs and then there can be combined uh, sewer overflows. So, wherever the uh, sewage and then the storm water drains are say single one I mean combined system there it can overflow and then it can create uh, when especially mixed with uh, uh, sewage then there can be uh, uh, more problems environmental problems. And then uh, infrastructure damage and then uh, uh, so this all this can cause uh, contamination of the surface water like uh, stream uh, rivers, uh, ponds or lakes. Uh, and then also the, the coastal water bodies will be also affected uh, by the, the polluted storm water. So, that way we have to manage the storm water very scientifically and then uh, we have to we should appropriate um, plants and then uh, appropriate drainage system and then uh, uh, say if we can treat this storm water to certain extent so that the, the surface water will not be or the or including the ground water will not be polluted due to the polluted uh, storm water. So, that way we have to plan the system, uh, the storm water system uh, appropriately. So, that way we can see that storm water management is a uh, very, very uh, important topic when we discuss about the uh, watershed management. So, now uh, this whether we can harvest this storm water as we discussed, we are discussing about the rainwater harvesting earlier. So, now the question is whether we can capture this storm water which, which can cause otherwise uh, various problems like flooding or the pollution to the surface water bodies. So, if we can uh, say harvest some of the water and then either we can use it or we can um, say uh, uh, infiltrate down to the aquifer systems. So, then that will be that will uh, reduce the uh, storm water problems like flooding. So, let us look uh, say some important aspects related to storm water harvesting. So, st storm water concern uh, for the volume and timing of runoff water. So, that means flood control uh, and water supplies and other related uh, water pollution. So, storm water as we discussed it can cause uh, flooding and then uh, it can be also uh, cause water surface water pollution. So, that way uh, storm water uh, say as, as I mentioned earlier it is also an important resource. So, since um, it is this storm water is not much polluted water we, if we give some simple treatment like um, uh, sedimentation or like um, say settle, settle, settling tanks through that kind of treatment we can uh, directly utilize uh, this st storm water. So, storm water is uh, say also a resource which we, we can readily uh, use for uh, use for various um, uh, purposes. So, say like uh, techniques like storm water harvesting uh, with point source water management and purification can potentially make urban environment uh, self sustaining in terms of water. So, especially say urbanized watershed. So, we can see that uh, uh, when the urbanization increases uh, more water is needed. Uh, so, that way whatever water is water is available in, in that uh, watershed may not be sufficient if especially if this storm water is not um, harvested or storm water is not properly utilized. So, that way if we can uh, collect this storm water and then either allows this storm water to recharge to the to the aquifer systems or we can use uh, to certain uh, ways then that will be uh, very uh, useful. So, storm water harvesting is the collection, accumulation, uh, treatment or purification and storing for its eventual um, reuse. So, uh, storing can be either a direct storage like in a pond or in tanks or it can be also uh, we can reach out to the to the ground water systems. 
So, that way the storm water harvesting is very important and it can also include other catchment areas from man made surfaces such as roads or other urban environments uh, such as parks, gardens and uh, playing field. So, that way uh, in all these areas uh, say we can capture the storm water and then uh, say we can uh, treat it properly, purify it and directly utilize it or we can reach out to the aquifer systems. So, that way storm water harvesting is, uh, is a very important in terms of appropriate water resource utilization uh, within a uh, watershed. Uh, so, uh, now let us look into various aspects of uh, storm water management. So, uh, as we have seen uh, say uh, especially in the rainy season uh, say or monsoon season we have got so much of uh, storm water depending upon the rainfall condition. So, uh, say we have to deal with uh, large quantity of water and then as we discussed there will be pollution problems also. So, we have to deal with the quality of the water. So, that way uh, when we when we have to deal with the quantity and quality of the storm water we co call uh, the, the process as storm water management. So, uh, generally say we have to go for the best management practices. So, which, which is best possible as far as the, the storm water management is concerned. So, the best management practice is often used to refer to both structural or engineered control devices and systems say like um, retention ponds or to treat polluted storm water and, uh, um, say or um, say storage uh, within a pond as well as operational or procedural uh, practices. So, this um, storm water management is, is, is one of the best management practice. So, it can be uh, for operational purpose or the procedural uh, practices. So, there are many forms of storm water management and the best management practices um, uh, uh, may include say manage the storm water to control flooding and erosion. Uh, uh, then uh, manage and control uh, hazardous materials to prevent uh, release of pollutants to the environment such as source control say, say from an industry or other sources. Then plan and construct storm water systems so that uh, contaminants are removed before they uh, pollute the surface waters uh, or the groundwater resources. So, we have to when we look into the storm water management we have to uh, deal two aspects one is the quantity of the storm water, second one is the, the quality of the storm water. So, quantity is concerned so that, that depends mainly depends upon the rainfall pattern, the rainfall uh, conditions. Uh, so, and then how effectively we can capture the storm water and then use for various purposes. And then quality issues are concerned uh, say from where the pollution is coming, uh, pollutant is coming and mixing with the, 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 the storm water and then uh, uh, whether that will affect surface water sources like rivers, lakes or other um, um, uh, say uh, surface water ponds and other things or uh, it may this polluted water may infiltrate down to the aquifer systems and then also uh, cause the, the pollution to the uh, ground water system. So, that way uh, we have to see uh, that best management practices are followed as far as storm water management is uh, concerned. So, that way uh, we have to acquire and protect natural waterways where they still exist or can be rehabilitated. So, uh, if it is uh, say uh, the development work is going on in natural uh, uh, say waterways areas then uh, say uh, how we can uh, uh, do best management practices. So, like uh, we can build soft uh, structures such as ponds, soils or wetlands to work with the existing or hard drainage structures such as pipes and concrete channels. So, as far as storm water uh, systems so, so storm water management is concerned uh, we can go for soft structures or we can go for hard uh, drainage structures. So, soft, soft structures generally in, in storm water management we call ponds, soils uh, or wetlands. So, that can appropriately collect the, the uh, storm water and then uh, so it will be automatically treated like uh, sedimentation and um, uh, say treatment within a wetlands or we can we have to go for hard structures like uh, we can collect all this storm water through pipes channels and then we can uh, give appropriate uh, treatments. Then uh, we have to revise uh, current storm water regulations to address 
comprehensive storm water needs. So, as far as say how we are effectively utilizing this storm water. So, depending upon that we can have uh, appropriate uh, rules and regulations uh, for as far as the storm water um, uh, management is concerned and then uh, we can enhance and enforce existing ordinances or laws to make sure uh, uh, property owners consider the effects of storm water before and after development of uh, their land. So, uh, all this depends say the, the whenever a watershed basis or an a particular land device when we consider. So, it depends upon the developments, uh, developments taking place within that area. So, we have to we should have certain rules and regulations as far as storm water management is concerned. So, that um, the uh, private land owners or the property owners also uh, uh, say, uh, uh, say uh, they, they also uh, go through this laws and then um, implement these uh, rules as far as the storm water is concerned. Then uh, we have to educate a community about how uh, its actions affect the water quality. So, most of the time as far as the private land uh, owners or users, they may not bother about the water quality related to storm water, but uh, storm water say polluted storm water is a major co cause of water pollution. So, that way uh, we should have strict rules and regulations and then we have to implement these uh, rules and regulations. So, that way we have to plan carefully uh, to create solutions before problems becomes uh, too great. Especially in cities like Mumbai or Delhi and other areas, the urban um, storm water pollution is a major problem and then especially in places like Delhi where the ground water is directly utilized back uh, say uh, from the aquifer systems. So, that way when this polluted water uh, infiltrate down to the aquifer system, the ground water system will be also uh, get polluted. So, that way we should be very careful uh, to manage the storm water uh, with respect to quantity and the quality. So, now let us look uh, why we have to manage the storm water. So, as I mentioned in urbanized areas when urbanization um, uh, progresses then the, the impervious area also in increases. So, that way uh, the, that uh, uh, affects the storm water. So, that way as I mentioned uh, the pollution problem one aspect and then the time of concentration and uh, uh, time to um, uh, say the peak of the, the hydrograph will uh, be increased with respect to natural watershed natural watersheds. So, that way uh, then uh, so some of the uh, same uh, problems like uh, what can happen with respect to if you do not manage the storm water appropriately like uh, road flooding can take place and then related accidents, washouts, uh, driver delays etcetera. And then other issues like uh, building uh, and uh, property flooding say some of the buildings may get collapsed or then property may be flooded and then there will be structural and um, uh, property damage. Then um, uh, say uh, when this uh, the storm water uh, uh, say if it is going through the sewer systems, so then the sewer will, this water will come uh, there will back up will take place and that will be another environmental problem. And then there can be problems like foundation settlements, uh, then uh, devalued properties etcetera. So, that way as far as water quality is concerned there will be major environmental damage. Then uh, say many of the utilities will be affected. So, utility services interruption, interruptions uh, like um, tra traffic interruptions or the, the, in, uh, the internet or telephone uh, lines can, can be cut or there can be related problems like that kind of interruption, interruptions can take space. Then increased uh, cleanup cost. So, once say after the rainfall all this if these things are not done properly then uh, uh, many areas will be say lot of mud will be there lot of um, uh, the solid waste will be on the road and other places. So, we have to spend more money for uh, uh, um, say clean up after the, the rainfall events and then related health hazards and then uh, personal inconvenience then increased uh, insurance cost. So, all these are all uh, major uh, issues related to storm water if you do not appropriately manage the storm water. So, some of the solutions can be as we discussed it can be soft solutions like um, ponds, salts or um, uh, say um, uh, uh, wetlands or we can have hard solutions like a concrete steel and SDP pipes and then concrete structures uh, etcetera. So, where this water will be the storm water will be appropriately collected and stored and then uh, treated and uh, then released appropriately. So, that is why we have to go for uh, storm water management. So, and then also uh, say as we discussed uh, depending upon the rainfall condition we have to manage large amount of storm water 
to avoid flooding and other inconveniences. And then a traditional storm water management design, say earlier, say, say general trend is we generally focus on collecting entire storm water in pipe networks like uh, storm water pipes and then uh, we transport this storm water to uh, say off site and the, as quickly as possible. Uh, either directly uh, and then we can uh, either directly will be say discharged to a stream or river uh, say either with some treatment or without treatment and then to a large uh, storm water management facility for if it is treatment is there or the combined sewer system flowing to a wastewater treatment plant. So, that is where we have to say uh, we have to effectively manage the storm water since the quantity may be higher and then the quality also we have to deal. And now in the say recent times say uh, in uh, countries like uh, United States of America uh, the, the same uh, uh, the, there is certain terms like um, uh, say as far as the, the, to deal with the storm water related issues or urbanizing uh, issues say uh, terms like um, low impact development or LID and then wet weather uh, green infrastructure. So, these terms have come into uh, picture in the last few years and these are uh, say like uh, as I mentioned there can be hard solutions as far as storm water management or soft solutions like uh, uh, appropriate um, land management with respect to the uh, construction of ponds or waste um, say wetlands etcetera. So, this uh, low impact development and wet weather uh, green infrastructure uh, which uh, these terms which are coming to uh, say storm water management uh, in the last few years this uh, addresses uh, the the concerns through a variety of techniques including strategic site design um, and then measures to control sources of runoff and uh, uh, thoughtful landscape planning so the the main em emphasis in uh, the low impact development or the uh, wet weather green infrastructure is mainly uh, see the landscape planning and then uh, the main um, uh, uh, say emphasis on uh, to uh, treat the, the, the storm water wherever it occurs instead of carrying entire uh, the storm water to some centralized location and then treat it and then discharge to a river. Instead of that we uh, would like to deal with the storm water at a, a local level and uh, it can be uh, through uh, landscape planning or it can be some storage in some ponds or say in some wetlands and then uh, we have we should have appropriate plan. So, that way there are terms like low impact developments uh, lead and then uh, wet weather uh, green infrastructure these techniques uh, are now in developing stage in countries like uh, United States and Europe and then Australia and uh, so these are found to be very effective to deal with uh, the storm water uh, related issues and then overall environmental improvement have been observed in in, where in many of the small small cities uh, wherever this uh, LID and uh, uh, wet weather green infrastructure things have been uh, implemented. So, that way the main emphasis on uh, say uh, we are going for integrated storm water management it is not simply collecting the entire storm water and then treating, but uh, uh, we are looking to an integrated system where the storm water ma management is done by considering uh, various aspects of the land use uh, and then uh, uh, various other techniques. So, let us look into what is this integrated storm water management. So, integrated uh, so it is uh, actually integrated water management only uh, of uh, IWM of storm water. So, so, this address uh, many of the issues affecting the health of waterways, water supply uh, challenges uh, facing the modern urban city. So, that way when we are effectively utilizing the say uh, the water at local level wherever the storm water takes place. So, actually we are reducing the, the, the uh, water related problems since uh, readily say we, we will be recharging the water or we will be storing at local level and that can be directly uh, utilized. So, that way uh, integrated uh, water management uh, of storm water known as low impact development in USA or um, water sensitive urban design uh, WSUD in Australia. So, this uh, integrated storm water management is known as uh, LID uh, in USA or uh, WSUD in Australia. So, IWM uh, has the potential to improve uh, runoff quality, reduce the risk 
uh, and impact of flooding and deliver an additional water resource to augment the portable supply. So, that is the important terms here are. So, we want to reduce the risk and uh, we, we want to uh, say reduce the pro flooding problem and then that will become a uh, uh, it will augment the, the water the portable water supply uh, as far as the watershed is concerned. So, that way we are looking for development of modern city uh, say uh, wherever the water needs will be met through this kinds of integrated uh, water management. So, then altered uh, runoff predicted by climate change has uh, potential to increase the volume of storm water that can contribute to drainage and flooding uh, related problems. So, that way uh, we have to so this integrated uh, water, storm water management is a good option. So, uh, we can reduce the problems like flooding or water quality issues and then also so, we can improve the availability of, of the water on a local level uh, say in, in by, by site management or say land use land cover management itself. So, that way uh, this is uh, uh, this integrated storm water management is adopted in uh, many countries uh, nowadays. Uh, say further this uh, IWM offers several techniques uh, like um, uh, storm water harvesting uh, as I as we discussed uh, that that reduce amount of uh, water causing flooding uh, then infiltration. So, infiltration means to restore the natural recharge of uh, ground water and then bio uh, filtration or bio retention. So, that means uh, just like uh, uh, rain gardens to store and treat uh, runoff and release um, it at a controlled rate to reduce uh, impact on streams and uh, uh, wetlands uh, treatments. So, that way uh, the uh, bio filtration or bio retention is same through uh, say by improving rain by making rain gardens or uh, afforestations by improving the, the plant covering uh, we can keep say the rain water for uh, some more time and then it can be uh, released in a controlled way. So, that the flooding will be uh, reduced and then local water availability will be uh, improved. So, that way uh, the integrated um, uh, water management in its infancy it is in infancy and brings uh, together elements of drainage science ecology and the realization that traditional drainage solution is and transfer problems further downstream to the um, detriment of our environment and uh, precious water resource. So, that way this um, integrated storm water management is very important as far as the environmental uh, management or environmental improvements uh, then that means uh, the water quality improvement and then also the water availability uh, as far as the particular uh, area is concerned. So, now uh, let us have further uh, dis discuss about some more aspects about this low impact development. Low impact development or LID uh, aims to restore uh, natural watershed functions through small scale treatments at the source of runoff as I already mentioned and the goal is to design a hydrologically functional site that mimics pre development conditions. So, before the development what were the situations. So, we want to keep to, to certain extent to that level itself. Uh, by controlled uh, uh, developments and then uh, various other means. So, that way this LID uh, say in LID land development mainly it is related to land development and it works with uh, nature to manage storm water as close to its uh, source as possible. So, we do not want to take this entire storm water to some central locations and then treat it and then discharge to rivers, but local level we want to deal. So, that way it is uh, uh, land development issues and then LID principles uh, the major principles uh, are preserve and recreate the natural landscape features and uh, minimize the effective imperviousness to create functional and appealing sites drainage that uh, treat uh, storm water as uh, source. So, this is the basic principle. So, we want to preserve and recreate natural landscape. Then uh, some of the important practices as far as LID is concerned as I mentioned bio retention facilities, rain gardens, vegetated rooftops, uh, rain barrels and permeable pavements. So, these are some of the practices which are adopted in countries like USA. And then uh, this LID uh, say uh, the water is managed in a way that, that reduces impacts of built up areas and promotes natural water movement. So, that is the uh, essence of LID. So, we are looking for natural water movement so that more recharge will be taking place and the flooding will be reduced and then there will be uh, less possibility of uh, uh, water contamination. 
Uh, and then uh, say uh, another important another term uh, as far as integrated storm water management is concerned green infrastructure. Uh, so, uh, let us look into some more aspects of uh, this LID and green infrastructure. So, as I mentioned LID restores a watershed's uh, hydrological uh, ecological functions. Um, so, as we discussed and LID is a sustainable storm water practice. So, that way the sustainability issues are there and that will be kept within the watershed and then uh, environmental improvement also uh, taking place. And then green, green infrastructure generally refers to uh, the systems and practices uh, that use or mimic natural processes to infiltrate, uh, evapotranspirate. Uh, and uh, then uh, or uh, reuse uh, storm water on the site where it is generated. So, that way by improving the vegetation cover or through various uh, means within the area itself through green infrastructure, uh, we are um, say trying to um, say increase the um, transpiration or evapotranspiration and then uh, we are also trying to reuse the storm water say by uh, infiltrating down to the uh, ground. So, green infrastructure generally used at a wide range of landscape scales in place or in addition to more traditional storm water control elements to support the principle, principles of um, say LID uh, say uh, which we discussed. So, then uh, say the other term related to green infrastructure is wet weather green infrastructure. So, this en encompasses the approaches and technologies to infiltrate uh, evapotranspire uh, capture and reuse the storm water to maintain or restore the natural hydrology. So, in all this uh, LID or green infrastructure the major emphasis is on the, the uh, keeping the natural ecology uh, with uh, minimal developments and then uh, uh, our, uh, say uh, give the possibility of recharge more recharge to the, uh, the uh, grounds uh, or to the aquifer systems and then reduce the uh, pollution. So, some that way some of the benefits of LID and green infrastructure includes like benefits related to social, economic, uh, environmental. So, the social means it is uh, say uh, reduction in urban heat islands effects provide green jobs, uh, green business opportunities. So, whenever this kinds of planning takes place there are more jobs are created and then education information provided through street kiosks, then crime reduction, uh, health benefits through walking, biking, running, trails etcetera. So, there, there are some uh, direct benefits and the, some of the indirect benefits also. And then economic benefits include energy cost reduction using wind powered uh, uh, lighting, uh, then uh, water conservation, then uh, green enterprise business opportunities etcetera. Then as far as environment is concerned the total environment improvement will take place uh, like carbon sequestration, improved water quality through 90 percent capture of storm water, then carbon footprint reduction, recycling and beneficial use etcetera. So, these are some of the benefits of LID and the uh, green infrastructure as part of um, the, the integrated uh, storm water uh, management. So, now uh, say uh, as we discussed so all these practices it is better to do on a watershed scale since watershed is the hydrologic unit as we were discussing in, in, in our lectures. So, when we are looking to storm water management uh, on a watershed basis some of the important goals include uh, like a reduction of flood damage to life and property as we already discussed then minimization of storm water runoff from new developments then reduction of soil erosion from construction activities. Uh, insurance of uh, adequate storm water facilities, then maintenance of groundwater recharge, then prevention or reduction of non point uh, storm water pollution, then maintenance of um, surface waters to ensure their biological uh, functions, then protection of public health uh, and welfare. So, like that uh, number of goals we can set as far as the watershed based uh, storm water management is concerned. So, depending upon the area, depending upon the urbanization all it took place or how um, uh, what pace the urbanization taking place, we can set our goals and then uh, uh, we can try to achieve these goals. So, the main goal will be to capture the storm water as much as possible quantity wise and then keep the best quality possible I mean to improve the water quality as far as the storm water is concerned. And some of the important principles which we adopt for watershed based storm water management uh, includes uh, say uh, uh, we can uh, view the regulatory compliance as a minimum requirement for acceptance 
so uh, wherever rules and regulations are there we have to see that they are implemented and then requires a storm water management plan considering watershed wide needs. So, uh, when we consider the hydrology unit as watershed uh, the, uh, the wa watershed based uh, management. So, then we have to see what are the other needs of the watershed. So, accordingly we can uh, uh, do the uh, storm water management. Then uh, it also focuses on achieving good environmental results for the watershed in a cost effective manner. Then integrates storm water plans uh, into projects developments and project uh, features then uses collaborative partnership to uh, leverage and then deliver a combination of watershed uh, improvements and then a coordinated uh, mitigation or enhancement strategy. So, that way uh, uh, when we deal with uh, watershed based storm water management we can uh, with respect to the goals we can adopt uh, specific technologies uh, which uh, meet with the, the, the regulatory compliance and then uh, uh, so that uh, there will be improvement as far as the uh, total uh, environment uh, on, uh, on a uh, watershed uh, basis. Uh, so, that way uh, when we look into the storm water management, so let us now look into some of the important control measures. So, we can have various measures to deal with the storm water. So, that, that way let us look into uh, various approaches uh, as far as the uh, storm water is concerned. So, the policies and source controls are concerned, uh, it can be public education, land use planning, material management, etcetera. Then uh, uh, lot level source controls are concerned, then uh, we can look for green roofs, local storage or detention, storm water harvesting, local infiltration etcetera. Then community level storm water control measures are concerned, we can go for community uh, infiltration uh, facilities, storm water management ponds, uh, constructed wetlands or natural wetlands. So, these are all uh, say uh, structural measures actually the policies and source control is concerned it is non structural measures. Then watershed level measures it can be structural or non structural depending upon what, uh, what we are adopting or what kind of control measures we are going for. So, it can uh, so the common approaches like manages uh, water on a natural versus political boundaries, uh, establishes uh, water quality goals and uh, uh, say uh, protects and then consider cumulative impacts uh, etcetera. So, we can go for uh, various uh, systems uh, say depending upon what kind of um, category we are looking for or what kind of measures like whether we are going for structural measures or non structural measures. So, various norms various approaches are possible. So, according to the, the, the our goal the set goals uh, and uh, specified principles and the compliance with respect to the regulations uh, we can choose uh, appropriate uh, approach for that uh, for that location or for that watershed like structural measures or non structural measures and then we can go for the the storm water uh, management so this as far as storm water is concerned uh, say uh, you, you see that when we deal with the urbanized watersheds so uh, say in the uh, most of the urbanized areas we will have the sewage system also we have to deal with the sewage systems uh, and then also we have to uh, deal with the, the storm water so in uh, many many cities um, small or large cities there can be separate system one system for only to deal with the storm water uh, and then another uh, uh, piping or other kinds of systems to deal with the sewage uh, uh, or the waste water. Uh, so, uh, so, that way we can have as far as storm water management is concerned we can have separate systems or we can some, some cities or some areas especially third world countries we can see there can be combined uh, systems. So, where both the, the sewage systems or the waste water and the storm water only one system is given uh, that kind of system is called the uh, combined system. So, let us look into some aspects of the separate system and combined system. So, in the separate system uh, the polluted storm water runoff uh, we transport through uh, municipal uh, separate storm sewer systems from which it is often discharged untreated to local water bodies. And then uh, to prevent harmful pollutants from being washed or dumped into water bodies, we can also uh, go for appropriate um, pollution control measures. And uh, separate systems are comprised of two independent uh, piping systems, um, one system for sanitary or the waste water and another for the storm water systems. So, you can see here in this uh, the layout. So, if these are some of the, the, the urbanized areas and then storm water is concerned it is you now separately collected and then uh, it is directly discharged to a river like this 
and then um, the the uh, waste water is concerned it is all collected through uh, the pipelines and there will be a treatment facility like this and then after treatment it is discharged to the river or the uh, the stream so that is the basic principle of uh, separate systems and now let us look into the combined system the combined sewer system conveys both the sanitary sewage and storm water in one piping systems during normal dry weather conditions sanitary waste collected in the combined sewer system are they diverted to the waste water treatment plants and during the periods of significant rainfall the capacity of a combined sewer system may exceeded get exceeded let the ex, that is so called excess flow so this is a mixture of storm water and sanitary waste and this uh, directly discharged into large water bodies or sometimes uh, we will say uh, this excess flow we call it as combined uh, sewer uh, over, overflow so the system is like this so uh, say when say when there is no rainfall so the entire waste water is collected and then it will be uh, collected like this and then it will be treated at this um, location and then it will be discharged to the uh, river or stream and then um, uh, say during the rainfall season uh, there will be this sewage water or the sewage or the storm the waste water and the storm water will be coming and so you can see a mixed uh, combination of storm water and uh, waste water will be there and that will be uh, discharged to the uh, so it will say depending upon the condition it may, may be treated or without treatment also sometimes it will be discharged to the uh, streams or rivers. So, this is so called uh, uh, combined systems. So, that way what we are discussing is how to manage this storm water and then uh, say whether it is um, uh, say combined system or separate system. So, that way we have to in, uh, either we say collect through pipelines or the open drains and then it can be after treatment or without treatment it will be discharged. So, now let us look into what are the effects of this say if you do not manage the storm water properly. So, as we discussed the main effect will be the flooding problem. So, let us look into the urbanization effects and the flooding problem. So, uh, say as we discussed whenever the say urbanization takes place within a watershed, so, so many structures will be constructed, roads will be constructed. So, the natural surface is covered by artificial structures. So, that way it increases impervious areas and the channel characteristics of shape like shape, slope, roughness, uh, these are all better known as far as the, the, the urban areas are concerned and there will be changes uh, in flow pattern and the quality of runoff will be also influenced and then uh, say uh, the losses are concerned like infiltration losses we may we can sometimes we can neglect. So, estimation of losses become simplified. So, but this may lead to higher peak uh, flow and then shorter time to peak and causes the flooding uh, at the low lying areas and uh, undesirable load to the downstream areas. So, you can see that um, if there is no urbanization, urbanization that means a natural watershed. So, generally, so if you plot the hydrograph that means time versus discharge, you can see that say rural watershed where is not much urbanization, it will be um, the, the hydrograph will be a flattened uh, graph like this and the peak will be uh, at this location. But if the, the, the same location if urbanization takes place, then we can see that this hydrograph peak will be increased uh, like this and then time to peak will be reduced. So, that way we can see that um, what happens say the time of concentration is reduced. So, the time to peak is um, less and then huge quantity of water will be coming to the to the um, drainage systems uh, or to the streams uh, or to the river and then that will rise the water level water depth and then finally, the flooding will be the effect. So, the, the main urbanization effects will be uh, like um, uh, say uh, the, 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 the peak of the, the, the hydro graph or the, uh, the discharge will be increased and then time to peak will be reduced. So, that way there will be within a short duration uh, there is there are possibility of flooding. So, that is uh, the main effect of urbanization. So, there can be this urbanization due to urbanization and then it is flooding urban flooding there can be number of reasons or number of causes. So, uh, the, the some of the important causes are listed here. So, the causes can be due to meteorological factors, hydrological factors or human factors. So, the meteorological factors like uh, rainfall, cyclonic storms, small scale storms, temperature uh, increase, snowfall and snow melt. And then hydrological factors can be soil moisture level, ground water conditions, infiltration, impervious cover, channel conditions, tidal effects etcetera. 
and then human uh, factors like um, say changes in land use. So, urbanization means actually what is happening is a change in land use. So, land use land cover changes then um, uh, inappropriate drainage systems. So, um, there is no effective drainage systems or the drainage system is not effective. Then uh, occupation of flood plain areas. So, like um, wherever the flood plain areas that is construct say buildings are constructed uh, or it is engrossed. Then sudden in, uh, release of water from dams as due to the heavy rainfall conditions, then climate change effects, urban microclimate or indis indiscriminate uh, waste disposal. So, these are some of the, the causes of urban flooding. Uh, so, now uh, say as we discussed uh, say main issue is say the, the flood depth increases and time to peak is reduces. So, um, that way uh, so sudden flooding can or flash flood can takes place. So, now let us look what are the problems related to urban flooding. Uh, so, in this slide the impacts may include loss of money, temporary disruption to transportation systems or um, the, the telecommunication systems, then inconvenience to city life and then it can also cause erosion and instability of soils on steep slopes threatening houses. So, there can be landslide and other related issues. Then the extreme events results uh, in uh, inundation for a prolonged duration, then heavy rainfall, tidal influences and lack of adequate drainage system. So, these are all some of the serious problems affecting the especially in coastal areas. So, the, the, say simultaneously with heavy rainfall if the tidal level also raises in a city like Mumbai, then you can see that um, there will be heavy flooding problems and then that will be prolonged flooding as happened in 26, uh, on 26 July. Uh, 2005. So, due to the complexity of this problem, so uh, say whenever we we'll deal with urban flooding or urban um, uh, flood prediction, we have to we need a, uh, sophisticated tools like geography information system and data we may have to get from remote sensing and then uh, very complicated numerical methods like finite technical method or finite difference techniques we have to utilize to see whether the flooding possibilities uh, and uh, other things. So, urban flooding uh, 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 major issues are loss of life uh, say economic loss then uh, you know say disturbance to the transportation and the telecommunication systems. And then also say uh, the urbanization impacts uh, say there can be modification of uh, say flooding characteristics uh, say will be modified by introducing the storm drains in many of the urban areas. Then rapid removal of water from the drain area takes place as we discussed since the time of uh, time and infiltration decreases. And to delay the peak rate of runoff uh, uh, increasing and in the area of storage capacity and delaying outflow. So, we can have uh, the possibility of say detention ponds so that uh, all this uh, uh, problem can be reduced. And runoff from streets to uh, drainage system takes place um, directly instead of through the, uh, the uh, drainage systems. And flooding takes place uh, since limited intake capacity of the drainage system and ins insufficient capacity of the, the, the uh, say if it is pipe system, uh, so in insufficient capacity of the uh, pipe drainage systems. So, to deal with uh, uh, say the urban flooding problems uh, say we can say in urban hydrology there are generally two types of approaches are uh, used. First one is empirical lumbar parameter approach. So, the empirical lumbar parameter approach, so we consider the entire drainage area as a single unit and then uh, we estimate the, the uh, flow at only at the, the most downstream point or the outlet of the watershed. Then we assume the rainfall is uniformly distributed in time and space over the entire watershed and then we can have a technique like unit hydrograph or instantaneous unit hydrograph techniques and then we can see that um, uh, how the system is. Uh, behaving. So, our approach is called a physical process approach. So, in the physical process approach say uh, uh, we have to determine say or we have to go for appropriate design of this storm water system. Uh, we deduct losses from the design storm to arrive at an excess rainfall rate, how much is the excess rainfall taking place and then uh, we can determine the flow to gutter or the, the drainage systems and then uh, we can route through this uh, gutter to the main uh, channel and then uh, uh, say uh, we can uh, use uh, say the, the, the we can route the flow through the principal conveyance systems and finally, we can determine the outflow hydrograph. So, accordingly the say depending upon the outflow hydrograph at the outlet of the watershed, 
we can go for design or we can go for the uh, management of the uh, system which we uh, consider. So, uh, now what we are discussing is about the, the storm water management and urban flooding related uh, problems. So, uh, when we deal with uh, say uh, the various measures uh, say to delay, so we can say we cannot completely control the storm runoff or we cannot um, totally uh, say uh, uh, deal with the entire systems. So, we can generally we can reduce or delay the storm runoff. Uh, so, that number of measures are available uh, like uh, some of the, the uh, uh, say measures which we can utilize include uh, large flat roofs, then porous uh, parking lots, then increase recharge, then planting a high delaying grass, then increase forest cover, then detention basins, uh, grassed waterways, porous sidewalks, then uh, rooftop gardens. Uh, fountain storage etcetera. So, in all this what we are trying is say uh, we are trying to delay the, the movement of the, the, uh, the storm water uh, and then uh, say uh, we are trying to say, re, uh, say infiltrate down some of the portion of this uh, the, the storm runoff and then uh, say the, the uh, we are trying to delay the movements of the, uh, the, uh, the runoff. So, that um, say uh, the time to peak will be increased and the peak also will be uh, reduced uh, as far as the uh, urban storm runoff is concerned. So, before closing this lecture, let us look into a case study related to the storm water drainage for an urban area. So, the study area is a, a housing colony uh, in Santa Cruz, Mumbai. So, here the, the aim is to study the actual situation of the flooding problem in a low lying urban area subject to tidal effects and um, suggest measures. Uh, so, presently the area is affected free, with the frequent flooding, uh, I mean say this study we have carried out in 2006, so there were heavy flooding in 2005 itself. So, present status of the drainage system, two submersible pumps which pumps this um, uh, storm water to, to outside drainage system and then uh, there is a 900 mm diameter pipe. Uh, say draining directly to a nearby river called uh, Mithi river. So, this is the area. Uh, so, you can see that here uh, the, the say the, for this uh, entire uh, area there is a, a major drainage system going to the, the Mithi river here which will be joining to the to the Arabian sea and uh, say here uh, say present the existing system was there was a drainage system which is joining here and then there was a 900 mm pipe which is taking all this storm water from the area. But due to the heavy rainfall conditions say for example, in 2005 July 26 this entire area was flooded for few days and then uh, uh, the housing colony came to us to see the, the remedial measures. So, here the two issues are there one is the main say flow taking place within the area and then also the tidal rise uh, uh, what is happening within this river system and then that will be the backflow coming to the to the area. So, when the water level rises uh, in the river and uh, high tide occurs uh, the outfall of drain is subjected to tidal effects and consequent flooding. So, during the year 2004 a new 900 mm diameter pipe has been constructed, uh, but in 2005 as I mentioned again there was flooding. So, here um, we analyze the system uh, um, um, say hydrologically and then hydraulically also. So, our analysis showed that um, the storm water discharge through the pumping is about 0.051 meter cube per second and the storm water discharge through the 900 mm diameter pipe was um, 0.492 meter cube per second and total drainage that where the capacity is 0.543 meter cube per second. So, we used to hear rational formula Q is equal to CIA and runoff coefficient has been considered as 1. And so, accordingly we found that this uh, say drainage system is effectively uh, say uh, useful only up to a rainfall of 25 mm per hour. But many times the rainfall exceeds many years the rainfall exceeds say it can be 50 mm per hour like that. So, during the monsoon as I mentioned river overflows and addition the heavy rainfall happens. So, simultaneously uh, the reverse flow occurs and that is the, the main issue here. So, the problem in selecting the design criteria like unavailability of adequate natural slope to facilitate gravity flow and tidal uh, effects encountered at the exit points 
then lack of space to provide appropriate drainage system. So, these were some of the uh, problems in this area. So, then we analyzed the hydrologically and hydraulically so various uh, rainfall conditions like 25 mm per, per hour, 50 mm per hour, 100 mm per hour. So, like um, say, uh, uh, say like a two, two year return period, uh, um, say five year return period, then uh, um, say 10 year return periods uh, like that uh, up to 50 years return period like 100 mm per hour and then uh, this shows the measured rainfall intensity and this shows the storm water uh, discharge. Uh, so, and then we say say do, did the hydraulic analysis using the Manning's equations q is equal to uh, a into r to the power 2 by 3 s to the power 1 by 2 uh, by n where n is the Manning's reference coefficient. Uh, a is the drainage section uh, sectional area, R is um, say hydraulic radius A by P, P is the vector perimeter, S is the slope. So, there uh, we use this uh, hydraulic analysis to suit to, to suit say for example, at least 50 mm per hour if the, the rainfall intensity takes space, how we can effective uh, design. So, that way uh, what we identified through this study is the present existing ground level uh, has to be increased at least uh, 60 centimeter in the lower levels of the low lying area. So, that adequate slope is available. Then a small gutter all along the internal road of the area leading to the uh, lowest point should be given. Since the existing 900 mm pipe is almost at ground level, it is advisable not to have cross connection to this. Then entry of storm water from the surrounding areas needs to be prevented. Then the cross section cross connection to the nearby draining nalla has to be cut off. So, these were some of the recommendations as far as the uh, this uh, study area is concerned. So, that way we did the hydrologic analysis, hydraulic analysis uh, and then uh, we come up with certain recommendations to reduce the urban uh, flooding problem in this area due to the uh, storm water. So, before closing uh, some of the questions like tutorial questions, critically study the storm water management issues in India, what are the major problems in implementing appropriate storm water management systems uh, in Indian cities like Mumbai and Calcutta and then you can compare with what is the systems in USA or UK and then come up with a better uh, proposal for Indian uh, storm water management city for Indian cities. Then some few self evaluation questions discuss storm water runoff parameters influencing on watershed basis. What is the best management practices related to storm water management? Discuss the integrated storm water management practices. What are the goals and principles of watershed based storm water management? Differentiate between separate and combined storm water management systems. Then what are the important measures for delaying storm water storm runoff? So, if we assignment questions illustrates various storm water harvesting techniques, why we have to manage storm water, discuss the features of low impact development and green infrastructure uh, within the perspective of storm water management, illustrates important storm water control measures, what are the important effects of urbanization on runoff, discuss the important causes of urban flooding, differentiate between empirical uh, lumped parameter approach and physical process approach in urban hydrology. All these questions you can answer by going through today's lecture. So, before closing down one unsolved problem, what are the important storm water management problems in your watershed area? Collect the necessary data for the storm water design in your area with the help of rainfall data, topo sheets and other maps such as drainage network maps, land use land cover map, road network. Uh, design an effective storm water management plan for uh, your study area. So, as uh, presented the case study, you can uh, solve uh, say for your study area, you can come up with a uh, typical design to deal with the storm water uh, uh, management issues. So, today what we discussed is storm water management. So, in the next lecture, we will be discussing about the drainage uh, design and related issues as far as uh, say the storm water system is concerned. Thank you.